Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the month of August. Today is Tuesday, August 1st, 2023. It is 9.03 a.m. And it's good to be back today, everyone. So, Allison, what are we doing today? Today we're doing the second half of Mark chapter 14, and we're going to stick with the Amplified Translation. And we have to go through the footnotes. All right. So just a quick um, follow up. At the end of yesterday's reading, we were discussing, um, I went off on a little tangent about um, when Jesus says to them, could you not watch one hour? So that's what I ended up titling this yesterday. Um, could you not watch for one hour? And it was a kind of, it was a reminder to all of us not to give Jesus the leftovers, not to give God the leftover minutes of the day where we're tired and we're worn out and we can't keep our eyes open and we can't focus on him. But to do this in the morning, like we're doing when we wake up and we're, we're, we are refreshed and revived and we're focused and we're energetic. This is for myself. I'll speak for myself. This is the best time for me to um, pray and get into the word of God. I had my praise and worship music on this morning. And um, not to wait until the end of the day when I lay my head down on the pillow or I sit down to read and then I'm asleep. All right. So yesterday, let me just recap this quickly for you, because this was actually a long chapter. This is Mark chapter 14, again, the Amplified Translation. So the first thing we read about yesterday, the this, this section was called Death Plot and the Anointing in Bethany. And then we read about the last Passover, followed by the Lord's Supper, and then Jesus in Gethsemane. And that took us up to verse 42. So today, today we're picking up with the betrayal and the arrest, starting at verse 43. Jesus before his accusers, Peter's denials, plural, and then the footnotes. All right. So uh, let me make a note here because I don't have a note in my journal for today, Tuesday. And you know, when we pray in a second, we need to pray over the month of August. I can't believe July is over. Today's Tuesday. What did I say? 8 1 23. All right. So let's pray and then let's get into um let's get into the second half of the chapter. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for waking us up, God. I thank you for giving us the opportunity to enter into the month of August. This is the eighth month of the year, eight being the number of new beginnings. So, Father, we pray over the month of August. And I pray, Lord, that this month will truly be a month of new beginnings for us, oh God. Father, release new opportunities new relationships, new destiny helpers, new callings, new levels of anointing, new levels of wisdom, insight, foresight. Father, give us new gifts, new talents, new levels of creativity. Father, new homes, new jobs, new streams of income, new houses, new cars, whatever it is that we have need of, oh God. Cause all of the old things that are no longer serving us in this season of our lives. Cause those things to close, to pass away. Cause those doors to shut, Lord God. Open up new doors for us. Give us the wisdom to know what which doors to walk through, Lord God. Father, I thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We lift up our family members, both maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest, Lord. Father, I pray that you you will continue to keep your hand upon all of us. Father, I pray that you will give us safe travel and mercies each and every day as we go about our business, Lord God. Keep us from all accidents seen and unseen. Keep us from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Father, I pray, Lord, that you will bless the works of our hands, cause us to see the increase. Give us, like I said, Father, witty ideas and creative inventions. Father, enlarge our territory, enlarge our borders, enlarge our coast, Lord God. Father, make your face shine upon us, be gracious unto us, and Lord, as usual, as 
as always, we lift up the children and I ask God that you will be a fence and a hedge of protection around the children everywhere, Lord. Father, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that we are divinely protected and fully provided for and that we say thank you. Lord, I pray that you will continue to give your angels charge over us to lead us and guide us. Send your angels, dispatch your heavenly angels, Father, to go before us. Keep angels posted behind us to be our rear guard. Keep angels in front of them and surrounding our homes and our cars, Lord God, as we travel in the skies. Father, we ask that you protect the, the um, aircrafts, c c the staff on the plane, Lord God. Let us reach our destinations safely. And Lord, we ask as we read your word today, increase our level of understanding. Cause us to see something in your word today that we've never seen before. Father, help us to love what you love and hate what you hate. Father, give us a thirst and a hunger for your word. And Lord, I pray that you will restore and renew our health and our youth like the eagles, oh God. Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. Father, I just ask that this word will be a blessing to your people, that it will minister to each and every one of us exactly where, where we are. And Father, I pray that you will cause the reading of this word, the reading of your word each and every day to expand borders, Father, to reach new people, new audiences, Lord, that this will bless them, that this will be exactly what people need when they need it, that they need a word from you. They need an encouraging word. Father, so I pray, Lord, that the algorithms will pick this Bible study up from this day going forward so that we can spread the word of God for your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. All right, so let's jump into the second half of Mark chapter 14. And the first section here, starting at verse 43, is called betrayal and arrest. So let me just go back. So we ended um, verse 42 says, get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. All right. So that sets the stage for where we're going to pick up today. So betrayal and arrest. And at once, while he was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples came up and with him, a crowd of men with swords and clubs who came from the chief priests and scribes and elders of the Sanhedrin. Now the betrayer had given them a signal saying, whomever I kiss, he is the one seize him and lead him away safely under guard. When Judas came immediately, he went up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, master, and he kissed him forcefully. They laid hands on him, capital H, and seized him. But one of the bystanders, Simon Peter, drew his sword and struck Malchus, the slave of the high priest, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as you would against a robber? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the courts and porches of the temple and you did not seize me, but this has happened so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Then all of, all of his disciples abandoned him and fled. Those are verses 49 and 50. A young man was following him wearing only a linen sheet over his naked body and some men seized him, but pulling free of the linen sheet, sheet, he escaped from them naked. In the next section, Jesus before his accusers, verse 53. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court gathered together. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the officers, the guards and the servants, warming himself at the fire. Now, the chief priests and the entire council, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, were trying to obtain testimony against Jesus, which they could use to have him condemned and executed, but they were not finding anything. They could not find any. Verse 56, for many people were giving false testimonies against him, but their testimonies were not consistent. Some stood up and began to give false testimony against him saying, we heard him say, I will destroy his temple or sanctuary that was made with hands in three days. I will be, will build another made without hands. Not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. The high priest stood up and came forward and asked Jesus, have you no answer to give in response to what these men are testifying against you? 
But Jesus kept silent and gave no answer at all. Again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, are you the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. And you will all see the son of man seated with authority at the right hand of power, the father, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then tearing his robe to express his indignation, the high priest said, what further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy that is his claim to be the son of God. What is your decision? And they all condemned him to be guilty and deserving of death. Verse 65, and some began to spit on him and blindfold him and to beat him with their fists and to say to him, prophesy by telling us who hit you. Then the officers took custody of him and struck him in the face. At 65, they hit him in the face. Peter's denials, last section, verse 66. While Peter was down in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, you were with Jesus the Nazarene too. But he denied it saying, I neither nor nor understand what you were talking about. Then he went out of the courtyard to the porch and the rooster crowed. Then the servant girl saw him and began once more to tell the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. After a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, you are in fact one of them, for it is clear from your accent that you are a Galilean too. But again, but he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. Immediately a rooster crowed a second time and Peter remembered what Jesus said to him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And thinking of this, he began to weep in anguish. So would I. That's my words. So would I. I would weep in anguish if I denied Jesus like that. So amen and amen. And that concludes the reading of Mark chapter 14 in the Amplified Translation. Today we read verses, we picked up at verse 43 and we read through the end, which it ends at verse 72. So yesterday we didn't go through the footnotes. So we'll start at the top and we will go, there's a, there's a lot of footnotes. This was a long chapter. Um, we'll go through the footnotes here. And we will start at verse number three. Good morning. It says, while he was in Bethany as a guest at the home of Simon the leper and reclining at a table, a woman came with an alabaster box of very costly and precious perfume of pure nard. And she broke the vial and poured the perfume over his head. Okay, so that's verse number three. So we have three footnotes here. One is for Simon. One is referring to the woman and one is referring to the perfume. Okay, so let's see what nuggets we might get out of this. So the first one, John the Apostle identifies this woman as Mary, sister of Martha and Lazarus. And it gives you the references of Matthew 26 verse 7 and John 12 verse 3. Jesus was anointed in a similar way by an unnamed woman when he was in Galilee dining at the home of a Pharisee. And it gives you the scripture reference here for the book of Luke, um, chapter 7, verses 36 through 39. Um, the second footnote, okay, I'm sorry. There's another footnote here for verse 3, which refers to the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 7. And um, we have another footnote for Matthew 26, verse six. Okay. So those are the three footnotes for, um, verse number three. Okay. So we have a footnote here for verse number four and verse four says to us, but there were some who were indignantly remarking to one another, why has this perfume been wasted? So the footnote here is referencing the sum, the people. And it says here, Judas may have been the instigator of this complaint. And it also gives you the scripture reference here of the book of John, chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. All right, the next footnote here is for verse 12. 
12 reads, this is in the section called the last Passover. On the first day of this festival of unleavened bread, when as was customary, they sacrificed the Passover lamb. His disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to prepare for you to eat the Passover? So the footnote here is referencing unleavened bread. And the footnotes tell us. This remembrance lasted eight days. The Passover lambs were selected on the 10th of Nisan, Nisan uh, March and April, and sacrificed on the 14th, the first day of the feast. The Passover meal was eaten on the same night, the 15th of Nisan. Passover was immediately followed by the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the 15th through the 21st. The terms Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were used interchangeably. Okay, again, let me just read that again. Passover, the terms Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were used interchangeably. All right, verse 13. And he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. All right. So this is referencing verse 13. This is uh, the footnote here is on the man that will be carrying the water. Water jars were usually carried by women. So it would have been an, it would have been easy to notice a man servant performing this task. All right, verse 14. It says, to say to the owner of the house, he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? So the footnote here is referring to the owner of the house. And it says here, as the, the owner of the house is Mark's father. All right, let's go down to verse 26. 26 says, after they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So the footnote here is referencing the hymn. And it says here, the Hallel Psalms, which are 113 through 118 were sung at Passover. Now, these are the types of nuggets, the little tidbits of information that I like. So now we know in the book of Psalms, Psalms 113 through 118 were sung at Passover. All right, 36. Here we go. He was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of judgment away from me. But not what I will, but what you will. Right, Father, your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. All right, so the footnote here in verse 36 is referencing Abba. And it says, an Aramaic word used by young children when addressing their fathers, but not used by Jews in prayer because the words implied familiarity. Jesus's use of the word emphasized his father's son relationship with God. Now, just a little personal tidbit. Um, I journal. I haven't been journaling consistent, consistently, but I do journal. And I start all of my, my journal entries um, to God, you know, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And um, I think maybe, let's say, the last two days I used Abba because I was speaking to him in that father-daughter relationship. I was speaking to him as a young, from the perspective as... This says here an Aramaic used by young children when addressing their fathers. And I was taking the position of a daughter addressing my daddy. And so I referred to him as my in my journal entries as Abba. You know, kind of like daddy. You know, the same way I did as a little girl with my biological father, my nat natural father. All right, verse 45. When Judas came, immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, Master, and he kissed him forcefully. And the footnote here is referring to the kiss. 
And it says, a kiss on either hand or cheek was a common gesture of greeting and reverence given to a rabbi by his disciples. The purpose of Judas's exaggerated kiss would be to help the soldiers identify Jesus. All right, so that kind of explains why it says forcefully, right? Why he forcefully kissed him as opposed to, and we've seen this, you know, whether you see it in, in movies or whether it's your culture, the morning where you see people, they will kiss either one cheek, cheek or certain cultures when you greet people, when you um, walk into a room, you know, they will kiss on both cheeks. So this gives us the, the context because I myself, when I read this and it said he forcefully kissed Jesus, I'm thinking, well, why did he kiss him forcefully, right? He said, who I kiss. Why didn't he just kiss him like normally, you know, kiss him on the cheek? But this gives you the additional context and it tells you now he it was an exaggerated kiss to set this particular kiss apart from any other casual kisses a common greeting and a common gesture when you encounter people right so again good to know i love the additional information good to learn something new every day right all right the next Footnote here is for verse 51, which reads, a young man was following him, wearing only a linen sheet over his naked body, and some men seized him. All right, so the footnote here is referencing the young man. And it says here, perhaps this was Mark, the writer of this gospel. If the Passover meal had been held in the house of Mark's father, Judas in the crowd may have looked for Jesus there before going to Gethsemane. Mark, being awakened by the crowd, could have followed them to the garden wearing only what he slept in. All right. Next footnote, 61. Reads, but Jesus kept silent and gave no answer at all. And the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, are you the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the blessed one, capital B, right? So the footnote here is for the blessed one. And it says, it says here in the Talmud, God is frequently referred to as the holy one, blessed be he. So this is in quotes, the holy one, blessed be he. Next footnote, verse 63. 63 reads, then tearing his robe to express his indignation, the high priest said, what further do we need have of witnesses? And so the footnote here is referencing him tearing his robe. And it tells us this was a response required by Jewish law for judges who had heard blasphemy. However, Old Testament law forbade the high priest to tear his clothing, according to Leviticus chapter 10, verse 6, and chapter 21, verse 10. Now, I did not know that, right? It says, again, this was a response required by Jewish law for judges who had heard blasphemy to tear their robes. All right, verse 68. 68 says... But he denied it, saying, I neither know, oh, here we go with Peter in the denial. I neither know nor understand what you were talking about. Then he went out of the courtyard to the porch and the rooster crowed. The footnote here is referencing the rooster crowing. It says, okay, later messages added this clause. And the final footnote for us is on verse 71. And it says here, but he began to invoke, still Peter with his denial, he began to invoke a curse on himself to swear an oath. I do not know this man you were talking about. Remember when we were reading, I forget what chapter it was. It was in the book of Revelation and they kept saying, whoa, right? Whoa. Um, that's how I feel when I read this, when he just, he denied him three times. And this last one that he began to invoke a curse and swear an oath. And it says he invoked a curse on himself. Not just did he invoke a curse. It says he invoked a curse on himself. I do not know this man you are talking about. Let me just read this final verse to you again. Immediately a rooster crowed a second time and Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And thinking of this, he began to weep in anguish. There's no other response but to weep in anguish. 
What else do you do when you have now denied your Lord? Not once, not twice, but three times, each time becoming even more indignant in your denial of him, right? My gosh, Lord have mercy on us. All right, so now as I was reading this this morning, I jotted it down for myself, verses 49 and 50. Let's just see. Day after day, I was teaching, I, I'm sorry, day after day, I was with you teaching in the courts, in the porches of the temple, and you did not seize me. But this has happened so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Now, this is in quotes. And then all of his disciples abandoned him and fled. They were out of there, right? Now, why did I write this down? I wrote this down because as I was reading this, so they're in this, you know, they're trying to trap Jesus and find some reason to put him to death. And his response was day after day. I was, in, I was with you teaching in the courts and the porches of the temple and you did not seize me. Now he clarifies this. And he clarifies this by by saying by informing them as to why all of this is happening. And I love this because this is really kind of like putting them in their place, right? But this has happened so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. So he's saying to me, this is the way Allison is hearing it. It's not so much about what you want, although you want to put me to death, although you want to torture me, right? This is not so much about you. Let's just get the record straight here let's be clear about what is happening this is so that the scriptures would be fulfilled i love it all right then i jotted down 57 what did 57 say all right 56 for many people were giving false testimony against him but their testimonies were not consistent now this is generally what happens with a lot of people when they lie right you lie and then you have to remember that lie. And sometimes you don't remember the lie. And then you tell more lies to cover up the first lie. And, and it starts getting jumbled, right? And it's, so these people are lying. I wrote this down just because this is what we see in real life sometimes with liars, right? They tell you a story. They're lying. The next time they change the story a little bit. It's not quite like they told it to you the first time. They forgot they even told it to you the first time. And the story begins, gets grander and grander each time they tell it, right? So the stories were not consistent. People get up, they take an oath in court and they lie. The story's not consistent. The stories of the witnesses aren't consistent. Verse 57, some stood up and began to give false testimony against him. We, ha we have that in real life. People will go into court. They will put their hand on the Bible. They will take an oath and they will lie. People will lie. They lie in all situations and circumstances in life. They get up, they give false testimony against other people. They slander people knowingly, right? So we see this happening in real life. All right, 65, relatable. And some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him with their fists and to say to him, prophesy by telling us who hit you. It was kind of like mockery. Right? Like you're so smart. You're this great prophet. You are this great teacher. You think you're the son of God. You claim to be the son of God. Well, prophesy, blindfolded. You know, you, you know, you heal, you unbelievable, right? Prophesy by telling us who hit you, mocking him. Then the officers took custody of him and struck him in the face. Worse. Now they're beating him. So they spit on him, they beat him, they're mocking him. Just awful. All right. And then the chapter concludes with Peter denying him three times. Awful. Right. What a thing to live with. Right. May we never find ourselves in a position, a position, situation or circumstance where we deny that we believe. That we deny God. That we, you know, may we never, ever find ourselves in that position and it just starts to make me think of the stories that we've heard over the last few years right of 
churches being closed, people trying to worship and have church outside and the police were called and now police show up. And this in particular, the story that I remember so clearly, so vividly, I watched the video, it was in Canada and they show up, you know, with these rifles and they're breaking up the church service and the man that was kicked out of the mall just because he had on a shirt that said Jesus and people were offended just by the name, not by his actions, not by his words, not that he was rowdy, not that he was making a scene or causing a scene. You're just simply showing up with the name Jesus on your shirt and it escalated into a whole scene, right? So we're living in days and times where um, the church is being persecuted. Right? All over the world, people are being put to death. I just saw something the other day. I want to say within the last 48 hours, I saw something about a person being persecuted. They lived in a country that was not, um, that did not believe in, in Jesus. And the person was, speak, was set to be executed for confessing to believe in Jesus. And this is 2023. This execution was scheduled to happen like soon. Right? So may God have mercy on us all. And may we always um, remain strong in our faith and be bold in our faith and not be ashamed and not close our mouths. As always, I always say, share your testimony. Testimonies. Because I believe that we have more than one testimony. Right? We have testimonies where God has saved us and we've been in accidents or car accidents and we did not perish house fires saving people's homes from foreclosure whatever it is causing marriages to reconcile lost children coming home coming off drugs to being delivered right so I just believe that we all have so many testimonies may we never be ashamed and afraid to share our testimonies I share my testimonies on here all the time you know so with that I'm gonna say this was awesome again this was the reading the second half of Mark chapter 14 in the Amplified Translation all right so I am live every morning Monday through Friday 9 a.m most mornings Monday through Friday 9 a.m I try to be on 9 a.m to 9 30 a.m eastern on Facebook and Instagram, I upload these onto YouTube. It's my desire to get on YouTube um, live real soon. Um, the I upload upload those these onto YouTube. The name of the channel for you, my channel for YouTube is Allison Vaughn. The link is in the bio on Facebook and Instagram. I do ask for those of you who have not yet subscribed or following me on my on YouTube, please do follow me on YouTube as well as Facebook and Instagram. All right. I ask that you click like, hearts, thumbs up on the videos, leave comments. We do have to interact with the algorithm so that the algorithm will pick this up and share our morning Bible readings with other people. We need to grow the family because tomorrow is not promised. And we never know the day or the hour, right, when Jesus is coming back. All right. So with that, I will say, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, and please do go watch when you watch the replays, watch them on YouTube. I would really appreciate that. If you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you will see my profile picture. If you click on my profile picture, you will see a subscribe button. If you click the subscribe button or tap the subscribe button, that will subscribe you to the page and you will be able to see the videos easily. They're all organized in playlists by book, by chapter. And if you look at over this shoulder at the end of the video you will see a video card which I will link to the next chapter of our reading all right so with that I'm going to say grace and peace thank you so much again today is August 1st let's continue to pray over our month of August that our month will be blessed and that we will see miracle signs and wonders show up let every need be met let our bodies be healed um, and let us remain in a posture of prayer all right. So everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. This was um, another excellent day of sharing my time, my morning with you in the word of God. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.